Hello, my friends, and welcome once again to the cottage kitchen at the Elliott Homestead. Today, we're gonna go beneath the kitchen down into our root cellar that's over 100 years old. We're gonna be talking about what we've learned about managing a root cellar and the hopes that it's going to help you in maybe creating a space like this of your own. Kamikoto is the sponsor of this video here on the Elliott Homestead. And once again, we are so excited to get to share this wonderful company with you. These are the knives that we use in our kitchen. They're made using a traditional Japanese technique used by Japanese craftsmen. And it takes years to master and to make these knives from Japanese steel. They're individually inspected, come with a lifetime guarantee, and are delivered to you in a beautiful ash wood box that makes them ideal for storage or travel. These knives are used in Michelin star kitchens around the world for good reason. They're so incredibly sharp and so wonderfully well balanced. Kamikoto has been kind enough to offer Elliott Homestead viewers a discount. So visit kamikoto.com forward slash the Elliott to get $50 off your purchase of Kamikoto knives. So our root cellar is very old and I'm very grateful to have it. We obviously use it to store a ton of our things. We have one little room here that's, how many square feet would you think this room is? It's probably like a 15 by 15 maybe and about the same on the other side. So this first room is where we concentrate on keeping our food, our dry food. So extra pantry things and you can see We've got some onions down here and walnuts and just bits of things. The second room is where we keep our cleaning supplies, extra jars, just sort of household things that we need to have organized. And then that's also where we have our cold room. So this room temperature is completely regulated by what it is outside. We don't run heaters in here in the winter and we don't run coolers down here in the summertime. So we have a cool bot set up. So there's an air conditioner unit that keeps our cold room cold. And that room, we keep it about 37 degrees, a really standard refrigerator temperature. But the rest of the room is just regulated by whatever's going on outside. So it tends to be a lot colder during the winter and a lot warmer during the summertime. I don't keep a thermostat down here, so it is what it is. We have a gravel floor in here, and that is intentional. That's for a reason, because it helps to regulate the humidity level. You do want a little bit of humidity. That can sometimes be a good thing. And this allows that to have a place to go. So gravel breathes, it takes in water from the outside, it allows it to go out. So it's kind of a living floor in a way, which is good for a root cellar. So this first room is where we keep um, a lot of our kitchen stuff that I don't keep on my counter. So my Instapot and my blender and my food processor, none of that lives in our kitchen. Our kitchen's just too small. So it all lives down here. And every time I wanna use it, I gotta come down here and get it. And that's just par for the course. This is also where we keep our freeze dryer. And actually I have some food to take out of there and some to put in. So maybe we should just do that together. So this is some really beautiful basil from the garden that I put into the freeze dryer yesterday. And now it's all dry and ready. This is our first year having the freeze dryer during harvest, and I absolutely love it. I have bins of green beans and peppers that are gonna go in here next, once I clean these trays off. Um, I also have some eggplant slices that I did the day before that I need to tend to, and some cherry tomatoes. So this thing is certainly earning its keep. It does take up a pretty good chunk of the root cellar. It has a fairly large footprint. It's incredible technology, and I'm super grateful to have it here because this is a totally new way of preserving for me, and I actually haven't broken out my dehydrator all year. Everything so far has been fermented or freeze-dried, and I'll show you a lot of those ferments once we go into the cooler, but super grateful to have this. Next to that, we have Dutch red shallots, which we grow every year. And those we'll need to use fairly quickly because they have a very high sugar content, so they don't store nearly as long as storage onions, which actually brings up a great point. I talked about wanting to share a few lessons that we've learned in the root cellar. 
one of those big lessons is that if you're wanting to store your food, particularly long term, like until the next season, you have to grow varieties that will store that long. There are certain varieties of beets, of carrots, of cabbages, of onions, of shallots that will store for longer. A lot of that has to do with the sugar content that's in the vegetable. Same with garlic. There are really great storage varieties of garlic, and there are other types of garlic that just won't last that long. So we spent a lot of time growing crops and growing the wrong crops. And then when we put them down here to store them for the winter season, they would go bad because not all crops are created equal. Not all varieties are created equal. You really need to select the ones that say good for storage. Because if you're going to go to all that work, it's really disappointing to have it go bad at this stage of the game. These Dutch red shallots usually last about four or five months, which is pretty good. But also, I just need to be intentional about using them up. These onions behind me here are Walla Walla onions, which, again, they're not a storage onion, but I love them so much. They're so sweet and so wonderful. And I use a lot of onions in preserving food, whether it's salsa, tomatillo salsa, quick pickles, that kind of a thing. And so I like having some onions that I can use fresh, but I keep them separate. So my fresh eating onions are behind me, and this reminds me, use these first. And then in the second room, I have different varieties that I've grown for storage, and those will actually store down here for almost an entire year. So I don't want to use those ones until I absolutely have to. So as you're developing your root cellar, you really need to make sure that you've organized it in a way that says, make sure you use this first and make sure that this variety is what you're actually trying to achieve. So this is kind of where I keep a lot of my overflow of canned things. I actually don't can a ton. I ferment and I freeze dry a lot more than I can, but I still put up a lot of jams and jellies. And I'm gonna put a link below the video to my honey sweetened jam recipe that I use for all of these. Um, so this is just kind of where we build our stockpile. And one thing that I've learned in having a root cellar is that it's really not worth it to just preserve food for preserving food's sake. When you eat from your root cellar, you actually need to work on preserving food that you want to eat. And I've kind of talked this about this in some earlier videos this season, but there has been a lot of food wasted down here. Granted, we still feed it to the chickens, so I guess it doesn't go entirely to waste, but I have wasted my energy preserving foods that my family actually doesn't really want to eat, and that's just not worth it. And there are certainly some novelty things. Um, let's see, last year I did a bunch of like these kind of candied jalapeno jar things, and that's fun. But I guess I'm saving and reserving my energy, or I've learned to save and reserve my energy to more nutrient-dense products and just letting the preserves be kind of a bonus if I can get to them. So on our farm, we do have a dairy cow, and we do raise sheep for me, and we do raise our dairy cow's calf for beef every couple of years. And then we've also done every variety of like ducks and turkeys and chickens. And that's been great because meat is so nutrient dense. So when you're focusing on preserving food, dairy and meat is really like, there's no match for it in the vegetable world. I love vegetables and I'm so grateful to be able to have fruits and relishes and all this beautiful stuff on the shelves, but that's not the kind of stuff that really sustains you or really gives your family the calories that it needs. That is meat and milk territory for us here on our farm. And so I've kind of let go of some of the specialty things that I used to make. So now let's see what's left. What's left is homemade jams and jellies because I do naturally sweeten them. And so I like to have those on hand. Um, these jars right here are a dill relish, which I love. And I don't like having to buy it because a lot of times it has colorants in it, like yellow number five. Um, so all our jams and jellies are put up. All our relishes are put up. Um, and I think the rest are ferments that we'll really talk about. But other than that, you're looking at, you know, some basic ingredients. Of course, we don't have our potato crop in here yet. We'll have a ton of potatoes and our onions. But the meat, the big, like, important thing is that's all up in freezers at the shop. So it's good, and it's sort of given me some freedom 
to just a- ask yourself the question, like, what do we want to eat? What's going to sustain us? What's the point of this food storage, you know? And if it's calories, then meat is a great way to do that. Before we leave this room, I'm going to answer this question. Another lesson we've learned big time. Um, pests. So yes, we have spiders down here and it's just part of living on a farm and you just have to get used to it. I don't really like spiders in my house. I don't mind them in my garden, but I do spray the perimeter of this room once a year because we have black widows here and I am not about that. So (laughs) I am just, I'm not interested. Uh, So we spray that once a year. The only other pests that we really deal with are uh, pantry moths which like to lay their larvae in things like flowers and bags of rice, and they're really gross and unenjoyable. So one of the ways that we deal with that is by using these tubs for food because they have a really hard time getting into these tubs. Glass jars with a nice screw on top are also um, a good way to keep them out. You just kind of have to be aware. It's funny you kind of learn their tendencies, like what they like to eat. For example, dried dates. They love them, and so you cannot leave those uncovered or just in a bag. They have to be in a really tight sealing jar or they'll get into them. Um, Not a huge thing. You just kind of have to be aware of it. The other pest that we do deal with is mice. Mice love our root cellar, as you can imagine, and mice are completely unavoidable when you live in the middle of orchards like we live in. So we have three cats. They deal with a ton of the mice problems. Um, They catch many mice all the time, but mice still come into the root cellar. And it's um, it's just a matter of managing them. And we do that with mouse traps, which is not ideal. I don't really enjoy it, but I also don't really enjoy when they eat my einkorn flour and poop in the bag. So it's just part of it. You just kind of have to stay on top of it to make sure that they don't get the leg up on you. Okay, now let's go to the cold room. Okay, so this is our cold room, and we've talked about this a lot before. This is just a two by four room that Stuart built into our root cellar, and then it's lined with this foam that you just get at Lowe's. It has an air conditioner unit that we put in it, and then a cool bot, which is a really neat tool that allows the air conditioner to just run colder than it normally would. So this room is kept at about 37 degrees, which is your standard fridge, and I'm so grateful to have this space because that allows us to store big amounts of stuff. So to me, this feels a little bit empty right now because we haven't brought in our main crop of beets, of carrots, of cabbages. So it looks really clean. And that's why I wanted to show it to you. It does not always look like this, which is another lesson that I have learned about managing this root cellar space is that you have to stay on top of it because as you use this space naturally, Things get left behind, things get pushed behind, things get shuffled around, things get spilt. And it actually takes quite a bit of time and commitment to make sure that things are kept clean and kept organized and not wasted. So my mother-in-law is coming to stay here on the farm while we are in Italy in a couple weeks. And I wanted it to be nice for her and I wanted her to be able to find things in here. And so it's all clean now. So let's just take a sweep around and you can kind of see what we have stored in here. So I only really ever panic um, about running out of a few foods. One is butter, (laughs) one is flour, and one is meat. So I tend to buy my flour in bulk. Sometimes I grind my own, which is what these are here. These are einkorn wheat berries that I grind into whole wheat einkorn flour. But I also bake with a couple other varieties of flour. And so I keep them in these food grade tubs. And I just put a little piece of tape on the top with what flour it is. This just helps to keep it fresh for longer. It keeps pests from getting into it. And then I can buy it in bulk and keep it in here and kind of always have a backup bin. So I have some all-purpose here, some whole wheat, some einkorn. um, And I always keep a stash going. Um, This is raw milk. Again, another food you never really want to run out of. We use this milk to not only drink, but also to make our yogurt and to make our butter when we're doing that. Um, This is from a friend's cow. Cece is dry right now. She's being bred. And so we're really grateful to have a source for that. We always have bins of fruit kind of circling through the cold room because we get all of our organic fruit from a neighbor of ours that grows amazing apricots and plums and apples and peaches and all kinds of wonderful fruits. So there's always these big lugs of fruit 
kind of circling around. So this shelf behind me is our fermentation shelf. I talked earlier about learning the lesson of only preserving what you're going to actually eat. And this shelf sort of proves that rule in our family. We love pickles. These are all just fermented pickles. I have a recipe for that. I'll stick it below the video. Um, this is all leftover sauerkraut and kimchi from last year. I can grow pretty good cabbages. We had an amazing crop last year. So from this year's cabbages, I'm actually just going to keep them fresh. They'll be um, stored in here in lugs. And I'm not going to make any sauerkraut or kimchi this year. We're going to finish up all this stuff from last year. This is all just shredded ginger beets, which we love. Really good for your gut. And then tomatillo salsa, which is my favorite salsa that's also fermented. And then some pickled garlic scapes. So it's actually pretty basic, the things that we're making. It's a few things done over and over and over again. But these are the things that we actually eat. And I am not interested in wasting any time or energy in the garden or in the kitchen. So I'm really thankful that I learned that lesson. These little, um, these little bins that you see here are tomatoes that are oil packed. I also have a video about that that I'll put below this video. That's a great preservation method if you have the room in your fridge or if you have an extra fridge in your garage to store them. That's my favorite way to preserve little cherry tomatoes. And then of course, we have our wine. <laughs> we always keep stocked up on our cheeses and yogurts. Oh, I also am kind of afraid of running out of fat. So I mentioned butter, um, but I'm also afraid of running out of tallow. So this is a really great tallow that I get from Azer and I buy a little bit every month when I do my order and I just keep a stash up there and that's a cooking fat that I use all the time. So this is what I'm actually after in here today, which is these really beautiful, they're not green beans, but that's what they are. Um, these are gonna go into my freeze dryer and these can just be added to soups and stews and casseroles throughout the winter. So should we stick those in? So I mentioned having to just sort of submit to the idea that you need to keep spaces like this clean because when you use them, they get messy, especially when food is involved. So this is the second room of our root cellar. This is a smaller room. Maybe it's a 10 by 10 room. Um, and I dream of the day when these are all like gorgeous built-in shelves that go from floor to ceiling and there's no space wasted, but that's not the case for now. For now, this is kind of where we keep paper products and a lot of our extra pieces, which is something else that I have learned about having a root cellar is you have to have a space for kind of the not pretty stuff because this is stuff, you know, the canning lids and the jars and the Tupperware and all the cleaning products and the empty jars that you're constantly shuffling through. You have to account for that and allow it to have its space or it will completely overrun your root cellar. So the way in my mind that I can kind of keep that organized is just to put it in its own separate space. And then when I need clean jars or when I need canning lids or any of my special equipment, I know exactly where it is. I try not to keep food in this room just to keep it separate in my mind, but we had a really incredible onion harvest. We ended up with over 500 pounds of storage onions. So they sort of overflowed into this space, which is fine. We'll sort of just shuffle them into the next room as we eat through those fresh eating ones. But um, again, super grateful for this space. It's not the prettiest space, but it definitely serves a good purpose. So these foods from the freeze dryer are gonna go into glass jars that are nice and tight and sealed up here on these shelves. I love the way that they look in jars because I really do even cook first with my eyes. And of course you want your food to look nice. So I'm gonna go upstairs and get these into jars, get them into storage and get the freeze dryer running with that batch of beans. I hope that our little tour through the root cellar has inspired you as you're kind of going about this preserving season and um, storing up all these beautiful crops that we have available to us this time of year. If you have more questions, just leave them in the comments below and we'll see you next time. Cheers.